Hi everyone, Vanessa Davila here and today I'm going to be talking about stress. So we're going to talk about what stress is, the overview of the nervous system, the stress response of the body, the HPA axis, three theories of emotion, a social construct of mothers and anxiety, Oliver Sacks and being human. So what is stress? Stress is a condition in the environment that makes unusual demands of an organism, such as a threat, a failure, or a bereavement. Um, stress is an internal condition, and it is your response to a stressful situation or stimuli. Um, when you feel stressed, your body reacts in several ways that I'm going to get into in this presentation. So we have the nervous system. I want to give an overview of the nervous system. Um, so the nervous system is made up of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And in the central nervous system, we have the brain and the spinal cord, and these are integrative and control centers. In the PNS, um, we have cranial nerves and spinal nerves, and these communicate between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. And then in the PNS, we go further into sensory or afferent division um, and motor uh, efferent division. So in sensory division there are somatic and visceral uh, sensory nerve fibers and it conducts impulses from receptors to the central nervous system. And then in motor division we have motor nerve fibers that conduct impulses from the central nervous system to effectors such as the muscles and glands. Um, and then in motor division we have the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. With the somatic nervous system we have somatic uh, motor or voluntary so it's a voluntary movement and it conducts impulses from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles and then the autonomic nervous system is a visceral motor so it's an involuntary system and it conducts impulses from the central nervous system to cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, and glands. Um, and then inside that autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary, we find the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. And the sympathetic division mobilizes the body during um, activity, and it's responsible for the fight or flight response, and we're going to talk about that more. Uh, parasympathetic is rest and digest, so that's when your body's sleeping or relaxing. Okay, we're going to talk about the body's response in stress. So now that we've covered the background of our whole nervous system, we're going to talk more specifically about the sympathetic response in our body. So when our bodies experience a stress stimuli, there is a biological change that occurs in our body, and because of that, we have that sympathetic innervation activation. And so our pupils dilate, um, our salivary production is inhibited, our bronchi dilate, our heartbeat accelerates, our digestion stops, our liver uh, stimulates more glucose release, our kidneys stimulate um, epinephrine and norepinephrine release, um, our peristalsis and secretion in the intestines is stopped, and our bladder relaxes. Okay, now we're going to talk about the HPA axis. Um, so it's a complex feedback loop using neurohormones that are sent between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal glands. Um, it is a positive or negative feedback loop. It can be both. Um, and it moderates the uh, physiological mechanisms of stress, um, reactions, fertility, and immunity. Um, and then there's three lobes in the hypothalamus. We're specifically going to be focusing on the anterior lobe um, of the HPA axis. And the lobe has some gray matter, um, and that secretes the neurohormones. And there are important HPA axis nuclei, which are corticotropin releasing hormone, which is known as CRH, and supraoptic nucleus that secretes um, arginine vasopressin, AVP. Um, stress causes the hypothalamus to produce these two, uh, CRH and AVP. And then in the pituitary gland, we have many receptors for cortical tropin releasing hormone and vasopressin. And these neural hormones are transported from the hypothalamus through the blood vessels. And then the pituitary gland produces adrenal cortical tropic hormone, ACTH, and it's released into the bloodstream. Um, and then when CRH and AVP is detected um, by these receptors that ACTH is released by the pituitary gland. And then we have the adrenal glands. Um, so the adrenal gland receptors signal to adrenal glands to produce cortisol, which is what we really know. Um, that's the most common you know, thing that we've heard of is cortisol. So when there is a certain amount of cortisol steroids sensed in the blood, then the brain creates a negative feedback loop. Um, by inhibiting the hypothalamus from creating the cortical tropin releasing hormone in uh, vasopressin and for the pitu pituitary gland to make less ACTH. 
So that's just like the hormonal and the very biological aspect. And then I wanted to just cover the limbic HPA axis also. And um, so it's regulated via the hippocamp hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex, and the amygdala via neuro connections, neuron connections, um, and endocrine pathways. So the limbic system regulates emotions, memory, and is important in HPA depression. Um, so these are the biological impacts of stress that we um, say. So, you know, when we're looking specifically just at these responses of the body, we could really just say the biological definition of stress would be the uh, collection of hormonal responses caused by regions of the body um, in response to a stimuli that we perceive as stressful. And then um, we're going to talk about stress and the three major theories of emotion. Okay, so the three major theories of emotion, we have the James Lang theory, um, and that is where he said that a stimulus causes an expression, and then that causes an experience, and I wanted to give an example. So an example is, say you have an exam tomorrow, and you you consider that a really stressful thing. Um, so the exam is a stimulus, and you have to cram, and you know, his theory is if you change your expression, such as smiling more, you could improve your experience or overall experience of stress. So you could change that stress to more of a content mood because of your expression, which your experience is not as stressful in theory, right? And then we have canon barred theory, which is that a stimulus causes an experience which ultimately causes your expression to appear. Um, so an example is if you're feeling stressed, um, that stress would precede the expression of it. So if you feel stressed, then your body can respond by your heart racing and your body shaking. Um, and then we have the Schachter Singer theory, and that's where you'll have a stimulus, it causes an experience, you cognitively label that experience as a certain emotion, and then bam, you have that emotion that you're experiencing. And, you know, let's say you have a final exam, that's your stimulus, you feel your heart racing and your hands may be trembling, and you're gonna label that as, mm, I think this is stress and then you're going to feel that emotion and you're going to say I am experiencing stress because you labeled it um, and then we see that Merleau-Ponty his theory aligns more with that Schachter Singer which combines kind of the James Lang and the Canon Bard theories um, in that Merleau-Ponty said that um, emotions are aligned with each other because our bodies which we are our bodies, and that means that our expressions are our emotions. And then according to Sartre, um, our emotions are responsible uh, to response. Our emotions are a response to a situation or an interaction with the world. So that's our experience. And then he says that emotions control the way that we act under certain circumstances and in certain situations, and we feel that we do not have control over those things. So in looking at these psychological theories of emotion, we could label or give the definition of stress as an individual's personal point of view of a certain stimulus, which can cause one to have a negative or positive experience due to a perceived um, label that we give ourselves to a certain situation. Okay, I wanted to look at the social construct of mothers and stress. So um, my face is most likely blocking the image, but it's a woman who did a video. Um, I also found many uh, women doing multiple videos over this topic of the social construct that mothers, they're not supposed to have depression and they're not supposed to have you know, judgments or fears about being a mother and they're just supposed to know things and they're supposed to be grateful for their kids and super organized and put together and not really showing any emotion other than being grateful for having her kids and being happy and, you know, she's got everything under control. And that social construct to me just causes personally me to feel more anxiety about having to be a mother in the future because if that's what's expected of me I have no idea what I'm doing and honestly a lot of mothers I talked to in the past they've been just like you know you don't know what you're doing until you're there and it is stressful and it is scary and it causes a lot of anxiety and you're not always gonna have it right but that's okay that's experience and that's part of being a mother so there is a lot of 
expectations about being a mother that to me seem very unrealistic and those unrealistic expectations a lot of the times put even more anxiety and pressure on those mothers which is ironic to me because it's just adding fuel to the fire but that was just an interesting social construct that I wanted to talk about that I see a lot um, and then Oliver's a sa Oliver Sacks's approach to stress um, in a lot of cases with his patients, we see that he first looks at the root of the stress, so he'll diagnose them, but before doing so, he likes to get a little feel of their life. He likes to immerse himself in their life. What do you do every day? What Do you go on walks? What do you do? Who do you interact with? Who do you hang around? Who means the most to you? What do you like? What are your hobbies? So he'll look at someone's lifestyle, then he'll ask them how they feel about you know, what's causing the stress? Why is it affecting you? How is it affecting you in your life? And then we'll see, okay, I can kind of pinpoint a root or a cause of what may be the reason why you're so stressed and anxious all the time. And then a lot of the times he'll give a prescription, whether that be medicine or a coping me mechanism without um, medication that could be like meditation or something, um, breathing mechanisms, or just a way to cope and then he'll see how effective though that prescription is in that person's life if it integrates well or if it clashes and if it clashes he'll make adjustments and a lot of the times he's completely geared individualistically to that person so if they don't like it he drops it and he's like let's create something that works completely with you this is your life I don't want to mess anything up for you so However, we can handle this stress. I want to make it work around your life the best way possible and not tell you that you have to take a medication or tell you that you have to do a certain way of breathing. Um, so he's very individualized for each person and he considers it holistically their entire life rather than just a symptom or a cause. Um, and then I wanted to talk about what it means to be human. So looking at these biological aspects and these psychological aspects, you know, we can combine them and we can mesh them together to see that stress and emotions and point of view all go into, you know, our experiences and our emotions that we feel. So our experiences are completely different for each person, meaning that individually we each can experience the same situation completely different from the person next to us. And I think that's what makes the human experience so individualistic because we sense it through our lens, our point of view. We label situations the way we want to, the way we see things. So for example, I am completely fearful of sharks, but a marine biologist may want to get up in the ocean and just be right there next to the sharks and study them. And they're just so interested. So in my state of fear, in my experience of fear, um, and terror could be their experience of joy and excitement and just amazement, right? Um, but I also feel that the process and the steps in which that we perceive situations is very similar. Um, and that's what kind of unites us all as humans. So yeah, um, these are my resources. Thank you so much for watching. And a personal experience of stress that I feel like I felt is definitely right now with finals. Um, definitely cramming last minute, um, you know, having that biological experience of shaking and heart racing and my eyes dilating and hyper focusing on the subject matter at hand. And then, you know, also my perception of it is extremely stressful and horrible. But then, you know, I try to not make it such a terrible experience and just remember that there's a positive light at the end of the tunnel that I gained so much knowledge from it. So it's just based on different points of view, I feel like is how we perceive stress. But um, thank you so much for watching.